my god, Erewhon. Don't even get me started. I hate that place. I, I said it. Include that. <laughs> Include that in here. It's a, a ridiculous store. And every time I check out, it's like Wait, I so have. You mean every time you check out? So you better. <laughs> oh my right. god. <laughs> Food is a big part of Asian culture. It's how families gather, show love, build community, and so much more. More than just sustenance, food has the power to take us down memory lane. It has the power to build bridges between different communities and also within ourselves, within our own identities. Well, today's guest is Ronnie Wu. Welcome, Woo. Ronnie. Thank you for having me. Hey. I'm super excited to be here. Here, Ronnie is a model turned therapist turned... A lot of things. things yeah, yeah I, have, I have a lot of things. It's hard to remember wow, wow, the wow. fact that you are even actually saying it. I'm like, wow. Yeah, so after, I mean, you were a model. You started as a model started and then you model. went into uh, therapy. Yeah. You were a therapist. Wow. Two master's degrees, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I don't right. know. Oh, wait, God, you guys are surprised. You're like, huh? <laughs> Him? I know. I, I, I'm like, people think I'm lying. No, I have two masters. You went in uh, an MBA and a master's in marriage and family therapy. And that's what the therapy is. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then after that, you went into now you are a TV personality. Yeah. Um, you are also a chef. Yep. And you're also a cookbook author. I am, as of recently. Like, so many things. We can't fit that on a business card. I know, card. what the heck? <laughs> Overaccomplished over here. Yeah. I know. Well, I'm in a room of beautiful Asian women. So, oh, I mean, like, stop. I feel like overaccomplishers are sort of what we do, right? I'm kidding, this <laughs> mic. <laughs> but, you know, with deep charisma and deep knowledge of food and business, Ronnie has built such a successful career creating Asian American recipes and has released his debut book, Did You Eat Yet? Cable Recipes from All American Chef. So accomplished, but according to Ronnie and your Instagram profile, you're just a man that loves his puppies, traveling and romantic walks to your refrigerator. I do. Aww. I do love my puppies. I have three puppies. <gasps> three puppies. Aww. Yeah. Three dogs. They're crazy. And my husband today was just talking about getting a fourth one. And wow. I, normally I'm the irrational one where I'm like, I want like yeah. more animals. And he's just like, we should get a fourth one. I was like, I don't know. It seems a little bit psychotic, but... <laughs> I mean, I'm not opposed. Like, I love waking up in bed with, like, smushed by dogs. So, I mean, smushed maybe. By dogs. Yeah. Oh I, like, wake up. I'm like, this is heaven? I was so like, this cute. is my life. I was like, it's mainly the dog part that's the best Aww. part of my life. So Did you grow cute. up with dogs? No, I grew up with a cat. Oh. My mom would only let me get a cat. I actually I really wanted a bird. And then I realized oh. how cruel it was to actually keep birds. Mm, because, like, caged, the beauty about birds yeah. is them flying. Yeah. So to keep them in a cage is, like, literally preventing them from doing the oh, one thing. True. I know I'm still being so dark right now. Okay. No, but it's true. Right. I, I have a lot of birds on my, like, arm. Oh. I got, like, a phoenix and, like, an wow. eagle. Because oh. I just love birds. Yeah. But, oh, there's a fish, too. And there's a fish and some yeah, flowers. Zoo on you. I know, oh. seriously. <laughs> now I want to know the stories behind each of your tattoos. Oh my God, it would take too long. Well, we are so excited to have you on our podcast today. You were actually our second guest on the video pod. Yes. Amazing, yeah. yeah. You guys didn't even tell me, by the way. What? So that, that we were going to be on video? video? Oh, yeah. But you look so, great. Thank you. I mean, yeah, I was you like, showed up ready. I showed up, tried to be ready, but I just assumed. But I was like, you never, when I was modeling, one of my, like, I wouldn't say mentors, but one of my, like, he was like an, an older model that I came really friends, not mm. older, like, Five, five or ten years older and he was like someone I looked up to and mm. he would always be like you always have to look good because you have no idea who's going to see you mm. and like who's going to run into you. He sounded like Tyra because that's what Tyra said too. Like, <laughs> yeah. can't, you know, you can't go anywhere without dress because he'd always look like perfect. Yeah. Mm. And um, he was always like, you never know who you're going to run into or like who in the industry you'll run into. That's and smart. I kind of stuck with me, although I only it's only like 50% of the time where I care. Yeah. Because it's too much work, right? It, it is. Yeah. A lot of ladies are like, gosh, having to come to the podcast and like, you know, Poor put makeup. on your makeup yeah. and like wear a different outfit every time. You're just like, well, we do want to ask you, let's like, let's take it all the way back because I know a lot of your work revolves around Asian cuisine. Yeah. Mm. So let's take it back to when you were a kid. How do you remember your love of Asian cuisine starting? I have to say like, when I think about Asian cuisine now, it's like what I get most excited about mm. when I eat. And then so if I were to bring it back to when I was a kid, it's probably just from the fact that it probably conjures up a lot of memories mm -hmm. of just being around the table with my family like family mm -hmm. time not that I loved it when I was a kid because I mean like when you're a kid it's kind of boring mm -hmm. like yeah. those family gatherings when you're like and then like all this food is constantly coming you're just and like you're sitting there you're like oh my god there's more yeah. and then you yep. look back at it you're like oh my god like we were like really lucky and it was yeah. we had abundance and stuff so I think the Asian cuisine brings up a lot of like uh like memories and my mom mm -hmm. that's what she cooked you know mm -hmm. she cooked a lot of like um, just like stir fried vegetables and a mm -hmm. lot of like meats and stuff. So that's sort of, I think, where it comes in. But I think ultimately, like with f like just flavor wise, I think it's just the most exciting yeah. and the most yeah. delicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I if I had to choose one cuisine to eat it, you know, it Asian encompasses a lot. Right. So like 
you know, I, I guess so one type of cuisine, I would say Asian. Yeah, like, is there a certain dish that conjures up memories from when you were a kid? I, I, in my book, I write about this actually. It's the kanji. My mm. mom makes the kanji. Oh, kanji. Yeah. So comforting. It's very yeah. comforting. Which, which type of kanji? Um, she makes it, well, the way my mom made it was with chicken bones. So she'd like oh. take, well, chicken bones are turkey bones. So like mm -hmm. after Thanksgiving, she'd take that, she'd save yeah. the carcass and then make it. And then whatever meat was left, she'd like sort of shred it. And it'd be like sparse because we had eaten all of it. <laughs> um, but she'd like put like corn in it and stuff. And then like, um, Pork floss or yolk song mm. was yeah. like, oh, yeah. and like I love the century old eggs. Like, oh the yeah, eggs are oh. so yummy. I'm like, is this bad for you? Because I can eat so I many. I think of they're these. bad for you. I think you they think are. So? Yeah. yeah, I, I think heard they're... it's like battery acid. <laughs> Girl just said it's battery acid. <laughs> oh god, well, it, you heard it from Janet. <laughs> century old <laughs> eggs, battery acid. <laughs> I'm still gonna eat them, but yeah, you know, they're still like, delicious. Maybe a little less because I think battery acid is bad for your stomach lining. But like pork or like salted eggs. Egg. That was, oh, that was yeah, delicious. Yes. Um, and then like the chili bamboo shoots, which I oh yeah, the slide was so good. Sometimes I just sauce. eat it out of the bag. Oh my god, one hundred percent. Yeah, all the condiments I could just eat. Yeah, yeah. like just out yeah. of the bag. Mm -hmm. And then exo sauce. My mom would always tell mm -hmm. me like this is really expensive, and yeah. I guess it is. But I mean, she make it seem like it was like a hundred dollars a pop. Yeah, yeah. Was, like, Every time it? they brought out the exo sauce at restaurants, they were like, oh, this is special because we have connections. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, like, right? how is this? Like, how much does this actually cost? Yeah, like everyone get a dab of it. I'm just like, what is this? I never, I never heard. Heard of this? You've never heard of the exo sauce or the the story? The story. I never, I never knew. Like, oh, it's a special thing. You bring out the bottle. They bring out no. It's like a little uh, a little dish, oh, like a tiny dish. Yeah, yeah. And then when you ask for more, they give you they little... give you like less. Yeah. And then oh. you ask for more, and they give you even less in the next one. And the next, it's just like one strand of sca dried scallops, and you're like, okay, yeah. it's cheap. This is. I'll pay for it. Don't be cheap. <laughs> Well, as we heard in the beginning, Ronnie, you have done a lot of things in your life. Uh, most currently, you are the chef and owner of The Delicious Cook, which is a private chef company yep. uh, for clients such as Gwyneth Paltrow, Mindy Kaling, and Jessica Alba. Wow. Um, before that, you were you just mentioned you were modeling, and then you also were a therapist. So how did all of these career transitions come about? Can you tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. what you were thinking and maybe if there's some relationship between them? Totally. I mean, I don't know if there's necessarily a relationship between them aside from me being the common denominator. I think ultimately, I, I, I've always had this like notion in my head, I want to live life just to the fullest in this mm -hmm. extent mm -hmm. that if I want to do something, I want to just do it like mm -hmm. immediately. So I've never been one to be like, oh, one day I'm going to do this. It was mm -hmm. always like, I want to do it. So I'm going to start tomorrow or wow. start right now. That was always my thing. So when I was younger, like I would say like a teenager, I'd, I wanted to be a model because, you know, obviously, yeah, I mean, if you're not in the modeling industry, you don't really know this. But like back then when I was like, 15, 14, like there was one Asian model in mm. every single agency. Mm. Like I think with on the women's side, there might be two or three, but it was very slim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on the men's side, there was one. So like when I was trying to find an agency, um, I started locally like in Seattle where I grew up and mm. it was always just one. I, I had an agency in Seattle and then when I actually went to like LA, it was always like, no, we already have someone like you. No. We have someone like you, mm -hmm. you know? So I went right after high school and that was like, people were like, oh. I got rejected by every single agency. So I went to one year of University of Washington. And Great then, school, by the way. It, yeah, yeah. but I only went to one year, but I was in a fraternity too. It was like the strangest thing ever. Um, <laughs> I only did it for one year. I was like, I don't really drink. Mm. I was like, you know, I care about my skin. I was like, I'm not going <laughs> to fuck this up. So I was like, so after one year, I, I was like, hey, this year I'm going to get an agency. Mm -hmm. So I moved to LA mm -hmm. after my first year. And I um, signed with Wilhelmina Model. Wow, yeah. that's oh, very cool. good. Yeah. Yeah. That's I love your accent. One. Thank you. Yeah. I used to work in um, fashion, so I would book models, and Wilhelmina was Wilhelmina. like, "Yeah, Wilhelmina yeah. was on our list." I mean, the landscape is different now. Yeah. I mean, because you have IG models, mm. and like it's totally different. But back then, it was like you had to have an agency, mm. and you had to fit certain sizes. Yeah. Like now, there's a lot of body body positivity, which is great. Yeah. But I think back then, it was like you were not a 32, 32 inch waist. You were not six between six one and six two. Like there was all these sizes, mm. and I was like, I matched those, and it was always like. And I think I went out at the right time where they were like short of the Asian, of this token mm. Asian. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to sign with them. I eventually switched to Ford models, mm. which I think was the end of my sort of like major modeling career. Cause I think um, I, I switched to Ford thinking it was like a bigger one cause I didn't love my agent at Wilhelmina, yeah. but then my agent at Ford was really nice, but he wasn't very good. So mm. I yeah. kind of messed it up. Mm. You always think the grass is greener on their side. Like, yeah. you know, if it's working yeah. for you, stay with it, you know? And then I went back to school, got my, um, undergrad in psychology, mm. moved to San Francisco because that was about the time I met my husband. Mm. Um, mm. And so we've been together for 15 years, but we wow. um, 
I moved to San Francisco because that's where he lived. And so that's where I got my two master's degrees, one in and my, my MBA and then my marriage and family therapy simultaneously because mm -hmm. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I originally mm -hmm. wanted to be like a relationships therapist to yeah. basically tell people what to do. Yeah. yeah. And I've never seen Sex in the City, but I guess closest thing is to what Carrie does in the show. I've never watched the show. Oh my gosh, you need to watch the show. <laughs> yeah. I love the show. I watched I the, like movies, the, show. the movies. I watched the do. movie and I was like, this, I mean. The movie is so different than the show. The show yeah, is yeah, 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 the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. I've seen clips of the show. Yeah. It's just never resonated with me. Mm. And I feel like I don't really like, I don't love the aspect of the women tearing apart like the men but uh. not so much in the sense that like i'm protective of men but more so in the sense that like they're just not helping themselves if oh. that makes sense it's very much like it depends on the they character, find like maybe. a little thing and oh, then they yeah, tear it apart and yeah, i'm just yeah, like yeah. no one's perfect yo yeah and so i was like god if you're gonna tear it apart from the way they chew or the way something like that so mm. i had a i had a thing with that so i was like mm, this is just teaching the wrong I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a. Mm. I feel no, like, if, a, if anything, it was empowering for me. To was see it? That, to I mean, see that perspective. Loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah. loved it. Yeah. But I would say, speaking as a trained therapist, that's right? true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if that's where it's coming from, but you know. So then I uh, graduated, and then I was like, "What do I want to do?" I had a mm. moment where I was like, "You know, what do I want to do?" And then I was like, "Well, I want to be in food," and I'm still young. I was like, you know, in my 20s, and I was like, "I want to be in food," and so I actually. Trapped myself in the kitchen for like six months and taught myself to cook or like hone my skills. So I think yeah, either yeah, you, yeah. you can cook or you can't. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of where it began. Can you not? <laughs> can you <laughs> I not? would be the can't. Well, there's a new cookbook called there's Did You yeah, Eat yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think you can learn a lot from it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We know who's, who's taking that yeah. coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and that, that's where it start, began. And then um, I started The Delicious Cook. And then I got my first TV show when I was 30. Totally like just green had no idea what was going on but like a very exciting time yeah how did that okay so yeah how did like, that delicious cook what did you how did you start that who was your first client like so my first client i fucked up that event so bad it took like seven hours <laughs> they they're supposed to eat dinner at seven they didn't eat dinner till like 11 30 because i like literally had no idea what i was doing i just brought yeah. groceries and i was like i don't i can prep there and like yeah. that takes forever yeah oh my gosh and so it took forever but i learned everything i needed to know mm. from that one event and mm. i never fucked up again um um, and so the business just sort of took off mm. and then I got my first show and then, you know, kind of started that sort of how. So then how did you get a show from just a few it events was, that you were doing? Yeah, it was, it was just by luck. I went in for a casting and mm. I met with producers and they really liked me and it was like a dating relationship show mm -hmm. intertwined with food. It was called mm. Food That You Laid. Yeah, I love that um, title. <laughs> yeah, it, it was polarizing in the sense that like the show itself actually had a lot of substance and heart and had nothing mm. to do with sex actually. Mm. And oh, so all my fun stuff got cut out, like the swearing yeah. and the sex Aww. talk got cut out. It's really funny because then I looked up that show, I was like, ooh, this sounds so like sexy. And I looked at it, I was like, Oh, it's very like heartfelt. It I watched is, like, a yeah. few snippets. I was like, yeah. "Where's the sexy?" Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> yeah. it's very true. And like, I mean, the promo was like me shirtless, and I was like, "Well, people who could tune in to watch the show didn't get what they wanted, and then people oh. who would watch it for what the substance was never would not watch it because of the name." Mm. So I think if I had been a little older and a little bit more seasoned, I would have been like, "Let's, this isn't gonna work." Like, there's yeah. a mm -hmm. disconnect. And then the editors kind of fucked it up by doing the big reveal in the beginning because it's what I basically did was go into each person's kitchen like each couple's kitchen mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. just like find ingredients what they already had and make stuff mm. and I think the fun in a show is like being like what will he make what will he make yeah. you know and they revealed it from the very beginning so mm. I think that kind of like, mm -hmm. like and I didn't know and I knew someone was off it was, yeah right I was like is that kind of common sense it like, goes in the end so it was really it was a little silly so um, <laughs> it, it kind of was like it was a, a really great experience but it what I learned so much from that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, I had a question. So I feel like you have such a very like um like rich like twenties like mm -hmm. with your with the career. Do you mind like walking me through like how many years were your therapist and then how many years did you start like getting into like because you got your degree when you're what twenty? I got my. I'm trying to think. Wait, sorry, how many years were, were you a model? I was a model since I was fifteen. Oh wow. Yeah, and then I kind of stopped. I th would say. Maybe like five, six, five or six, seven years. Oh, wow. It, 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 they all kind of overlapped with each other. Gotcha. Because yeah. it wasn't like a hard stop and yeah. then like a hard start here. So it was kind of like I would do, I did modeling and then I sort of, I wasn't taking it so seriously, but I still had my agent. So they mm -hmm. booked me jobs occasionally and then I'd go, I'd go back to school. So 
I would say like my undergrad was like five years. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. I tried mm -hmm. like pre med stuff for mm -hmm. like a year. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, no, there's no I like was failing every pre med yeah, class. Yeah. I was like, I do not understand this stuff. Yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. Organic <laughs> chemistry. Oh my peace god, out. the worst. <laughs> I saw that book. I was like, not gonna try. <laughs> oh my god. I had a study group in my class and everyone got like A's and A pluses. I literally was scraping the bottom of the barrel. I was like D's and C's. I was like, I don't. This is like a waste of my time. Yeah. Like I just will not comprehend this. Um, and then let's see. I was, and then I went to, then I, my other, my master's took, I think three years, mm -hmm. um, two or three years. And then I'm trying to think. Like, and then your other master's? Your second I master's did them together. together. Oh, you did them Yeah, together. I did them together. Okay. Um, so you were around like 25 then? Yeah, I think I was around 25. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like how old am I? I mean, am I, I would say, I think I just celebrated like a 10 year within food. So mm -hmm. I think yeah. I started when I was 27 or 28. Oh, wow. So, okay. okay. So you had yeah. three years you were in food and then you got the show. I got the show when I was 30. So three years, right? Yeah. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah, three years. Yeah, that oh. makes sense. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a journey. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, wow, all this stuff happened like so so quick. Uh, yeah. No, it, it, I mean, it, it seems like it happened really quickly, but I mean, it took it took some time. But yeah. yeah I mean, it was it was all like I don't. It, the thing is, I when I look back at the end of my life, I don't want to regret yeah. not yeah. having done something. Yeah. I yeah. think that's the biggest thing for me is like. Did I sort of do everything I wanted to do in life? You mm -hmm. know, and one day maybe I won't want to be a chef, but I think mm -hmm. right now this is, I mean, not right now. Yeah. I think given my tr my history, I think this is what I want to do. Yeah. But, you know, you can never say never, you know. Yeah. People yeah. change careers all the time, and I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever practice therapy? Um. So, oh, yeah. So, I, okay, so yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you had asked that. You're like, how long? There so, so, I, I did practice therapy for one year. It was an internship. So, mm -hmm. I, was, I never actually got my hours. Because, like, the thing is, like, it takes you about three, four years to actually get your hours. I believe it's, like, 60 hours oh, of sitting yeah. in front of a client. Mm -hmm. um, and oh. a lot of my friends from from my master's program, like, I think that's how long it took them, like, three or four years. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. I remember when they got it. I was like, you finally got your license. Um, so, but I was an intern for a year mm. at an AIDS and health clinic because I wanted something really intense. Mm -hmm. And it was really intense, but I also learned that, like, I'm a little bit too jovial and probably mm. too like blunt in a therapeutic mm. setting so i think i also learned that i'm probably not the best therapist in a room because mm. i think i tend to also like connect not connect but also like um get too like ingratiated with like the people's emotions and i uh. start to feel like i become kind of like friendly with them mm. oh, I see, not I see. like in a like a sexual way but i mean <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> oh, yeah, we didn't there. think just that just clarify <laughs> that <Yes. laughs> But just like I care about, I just care too much. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? yeah, that's just, hard. Just, yeah. just too big of a heart. Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard because you have to somewhat, you have to care, but you also have to somewhat compartmentalize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's because true. it's 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 heavy. Being a therapist is hard, hard work, and I yeah. like I think therapists should get all the respect and mm -hmm. you know whatever they ask for and payment you should pay them. But it's because it's like heavy work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah for you know sure. you go home, you have to carry people's burdens that's and true. like listen, like that's exhausting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's not for me. <laughs> I'll do it with my friends, but I can't do it for <laughs> people. For a living, yeah. For a living. <laughs> Whether you work for yourself or you're part of a team, it's time to get creative. Make your online presence and your business stand out from the rest with Issue. Issue is an all-in-one platform to create and distribute beautiful digital publications from brochures to magazines and more. It's perfect for creators, marketers, designers, and anyone who wants to make content that stands out. Issue makes content better and works seamlessly with tools you already use like Canva, Dropbox, and InDesign. Make it once and distribute it everywhere without reformatting because we know how much that can take so much time. Your content is already optimized for engagement and ready to share. Get started with Issue today for free or if you sign up for an annual premium account to get 50% off when you go to issue.com slash podcast and use promo code AsianBossGirl. That's I-S-S-U-U dot com slash podcast and use promo code Asian Boss Girl at checkout for your free account or 50% off your annual premium account. That's issue.com slash podcast with promo code Asian Boss Girl. So you share a lot of stories about food and you also talk about the sensuality of food. Mm -hmm. What do you think makes food sexy? Well, I mean, I think the most obvious answer to that question is like, like what person doesn't find someone who can cook sexy? That's I mean, true. there's something about like someone who can feed you. There's like it's very sensual for someone to be able to feed you and take care of you. Mm. There's something like sexy about it, and there's something like really like um, endearing about yeah. like someone who's not your mom, who's yeah. like <laughs> taking care of you, you know. And then like can also like 
pleasure you like in <laughs> bed, you know, like there's something yeah. about that. And I, I do pride myself in sort of my relationship with my, my husband because mm. I do think like the sexual part of it plays a huge part. And like, I think the sex part of a marriage is really important. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so I always make sure like that's like, we always talk, we're always talking about it. It's always like, you know, we stay very active. And I think also like, Taking care of him, like mm. I take, I find a lot of joy in sort of making sure he's well fed and yeah. taking care of, and like getting all the colors of the rainbow and the ve of vegetables and like mm. his necessary proteins and varying up proteins and like. Um, Does he do the same for you? In different ways. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He's not a cook. He sucks at cooking. So it's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one time I had him test one of the recipes in the book, and he almost burned the house down. No joke. The fire department came. Oh my god! <laughs> but that's because we forgot. It was like we were trying to like swipe out the the fire detectors and they called on the phone and phone was on silent and so if you don't pick oh, up then they, they think coming. your house is burning down oh my gosh yeah so then you like so they came and we we're like and like our neighbors like what's going on and you know we're like oh sorry we just it was like during covid so we're mm. like no crap but yeah i think it, it's just sensual. and plus it involves your hands and your mouth and everything which is mm, you know very true. sensual as well so i think it's it's an important aspect in all relationships especially yeah. romantic mm. relationships i think that's my answer yeah well <laughs> that was a great answer i'm like was that a good answer <laughs> i mean so you seem very comfortable with your sensuality and your sexuality yeah is that something that's always like been natural for you or did is this something that kind of like happened in parallel as you got more comfortable with like cooking and kind of mm. developing yeah i think it, it stems from being a model honestly oh. because like when you're a model you, you have to be really sort of your it's weird because your body is kind of nitpicked like mm. by inch. I remember there's one time like my agent called and was like, oh, you're being dropped from, I think it was like Banana Republic or something. They're like, oh, you're being dropped from their campaign because when you went in the fitting, you looked full in the pants. Mm. And like, I was like, are you kidding? I was like, I've never been skinnier. And mm -hmm. so I think like, you know, and I laughed at it because I mean, I was bummed because that's money, but I was like, whatever. Um, you know, it's, it's a silly industry. But being a model, like, behind runway shows and stuff, you're basically changing in front of everyone. You're getting, like, super naked. Yeah. Because you're just, like, changing. Mm -hmm. Women, men, like, everyone's, like, boobs mm -hmm. and dicks just everywhere, just, like, flying around. And you're just, like, you have to, like, not care. Yeah. And it, ultimately, it's just a body. You mm -hmm. know, there's, yeah, like, there's yeah. so many people who are so weird about it because you're just, like, I don't know. There's a huge pop. There's a huge percentage of the population that's just so weird about their bodies. And, it, it, like, I understand it's, it's a, there's, like, all this stigma around it and all these, like, stereotypes of, like, what your body should look like or what it shouldn't look like. Like, and mm -hmm. I think, like, ultimately, it's just about, like, it's, you're just, everyone's a bag of bones and guts. Oh, I'd say that all the time. Right? We're just you a do? bag of fluid. <laughs> you, yeah. We are a bag of fluid. We're 90% yeah. water. So, yeah. I mean, like, we're, you're just going to turn to ashes one day. But, I mean, <laughs> well, that's very dark and <laughs> morbid. But it's kind of true. If you, like, kind of dwindle, dwindle it down, like, there's nothing to be ashamed of, you mm. know? And so, I think I've just always been really comfortable with it, you know? Like, even around my own family, like, you know, it, like, we change in front of each other all the time. Mm. I mean, we're not, like... Our boobs and dicks aren't flying around in front of each other, but I mean, I just that's my new term today. Yeah. It's just boobs and dicks flying. That's just the term that I'm going to use everywhere. I'm going to squeeze it in somehow and never yeah. answer. Um, but, <laughs> but I think like I've, it's just I've just been comfortable with it. I mean, you don't see it sexually or or you don't. See I mean, it as I do taboo. see it sexually. I do see it sexually. I don't see it as yeah. taboo because oh, I think like sexuality and our bodies are part of human nature that's and true. part of the everyday thing. And I think if you're ashamed of it, like it's just going to not serve you well. That's true. Because mm -hmm. I think like I'm very comfortable with my body, especially with like, my husband and like, you know, so that's it. I think it behooves you or not you specific, not you guys specifically, <laughs> but just anyone to become comfortable just with your sexuality and mm. just with the human body. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand like the shame and like being insecure because I'm insecure all the time. But mm -hmm. there's a difference between being insecure of your over your body versus like having weird hangups about the human body mm. and like ah, right, nudity right, right. and things like that, you know? Mm -hmm. so. That's true. This actually brings up a good point because I feel like even for myself, I used to be like, oh, like I'm very like, Na my naked body is my naked body, but it wasn't until I went to the Korean spa. Well, it is your naked body. It is my naked body. <laughs> no one else looks. But I, I think <laughs> I always felt. I always felt kind of like even around like my partners. I was like, oh, like I felt a little, a little shy. Like, I felt really shy, yeah. and it wasn't. And then my partner was like, don't, don't care, you know. But it wasn't until I went to the Korean spa, and then I saw like so many types of bodies around me, and I was like, everyone just freely walking around. I'm yeah. just like. Me too. And I think it wasn't until then I felt really liberated just being naked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I think with those moments of like these little exercises that you do, you're like, oh, these are ways I could just get comfortable with the human body. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. And then ever since then, you're just like, <laughs> 
dicks and boobs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> But that's true, yeah. Anyway, so I'm just, I'm just picturing, picturing dicks and boobs everywhere. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great image, right? That's not bad. I just, a lot, a lot of flinging going around. <laughs> Where are we going with this? <laughs> Sensuality. Right? Sensuality. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I do agree with you that you think food is sexy. It wasn't until you put like you know using your hand and like using your mouth to get together. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, it's good to use it, your mouth and hands it, together it, too. It like. It's, it's good. You should use all body we parts. We should use yes. all of it to yeah. eat and everything, but it is and like, everything. And everything. <laughs> Et cetera. <laughs> Et cetera. Yeah. yeah, it's true. It's a very sensual experience, right? What are we talking about here? I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm getting to it. But when it comes to food, because one question I have for you is that like uh, with your background, like for example, but food being sexy, what is something you would cook for like a first date? Versus like a one year anniversary, like what differentiates these type of occasions with food? Totally, I mean it's imp- I think like for a first day, I think it's good to ask like people's allergies mm. and major dislikes. That's so not sexy. Just yeah. No, that's not sexy at all. But you don't want to kill someone. You don't want to put true. them in an anaphylactic true. shock or yeah. send them to the hospital. Yes, yes. Just be like, what are your allergies and what don't you like? Yeah. Okay. Mm. And then be like, okay, I'm gonna leave the rest up and surprise them. I mm. think like anything, but you, it's it's hard to say one sort of catch all dish that would yeah. that would do it because I mean it's hard for me. It would be like a really well cooked steak. You know, mm. like if the person likes meat, I would do a steak because I think that's like a sexy and it's kind of like, um, yeah. it's kind of classy and you're just kind of like. Why is steak sexy? It's like primal. Yeah, right? it is primal. Uh, yeah, yeah, Says yeah. the vescatarian. I know. Are you vescat? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Well, mostly vegetarian. Well, she yeah. knows though. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and also like I think it, it it's like a basic cooking skill if you can cook a good steak mm. because cooking a steak is not difficult, but there is sort of technique to it. Mm, okay. And like you know, you can also tell if someone likes well-cooked steak then you're like oh like i don't know if we'll work together, you know? like, <laughs> well done yeah well yeah are you are you well Hell done no, okay i was gonna say like a bloody um <laughs> not like super bloody but a little bloody yeah, but yeah. you know i, I think if you then so it's kind of like that's how i can t- like for me personally it's not mm. very windy. if you're pescatarian or vegetarian it wouldn't work but i think um you know cooking a steak can reveal a lot about mm. maybe mm. your food taste that's true, yeah. true you know and then i think for a one-year anniversary you really want to tailor it to like what your partner likes or mm. like a memory that you have mm. from somewhere yeah. recreating it you know i think first year is really cute like you know I, i'm the type of person that's into like sc- scrapbooks and like diy oh, cards no one knows about Aww. that but like with my husband i've never bought him a card we don't really spend money on each other because it's like, what if I buy you something? It stays in my house too. So I'm like, I don't want to buy you junk because mm. that's our junk. Yeah. You know, so we just do like cards and stuff. And, and we like, save all our cute. cards. Yeah. And yeah. so like the last 15 years, every single, whether it's um, he celebrates sobriety, our Valentine's Day, Christmas, and our anniversary. So there's at least four. Yeah. And I always have to come with a new fucking card. <laughs> and like, you know, and like his birthday's coming in May and I had I made this card and like it's they're not even like intricate. I'm not like cutting out like yeah, yeah, yeah. fabrics and making things, but like sometimes I am if I have time, but I don't have time. So yeah. I'll just draw things with Sharpies. But it's still like, you know, thoughtful, thoughtful and yeah. DIY and there's like an inside joke or something. So I'm definitely that type of person who like it's it's about the thought and being thoughtful mm, versus yeah. like material gifts. Yeah. Because like you could buy someone like a ring or a necklace or like, you know, a nice pair of like jeans or something like whatever it is. You yeah, can yeah. you can do that, but it's it's not as thoughtful mm-hmm. and you yeah. I just feel like thoughtfulness is it's more about a sign of yeah. longevity. That's true. Yeah. You know it's I mean? also it's very intentional too. It's very yeah. intentional. Totally. Yeah, that's yeah. very cute. So, what are you making for his birthday? Yeah. Dinner. Well, we're going to Japan for his birthday. <gasps> um, oh, sorry. I yeah. Just got back from <laughs> yeah, there. Janet just got yeah. back. From you did? Yeah. Where'd you go? Yeah. I was in Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto, and then Hakone, which is like a small little village area oh, or small little God. town where you can see Mount um, Fuji. How long were you yeah. there for? Like nine to ten days. It's oh, a pretty quick trip. Yeah, that is a quick trip. For yeah, that many for that many places. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I was gonna say like you were like there for like a day or two. A day or two for each place. That's yeah, crazy. but where where will you be going? We're doing these two resorts. Oh, have you heard of the Amman resorts? I so think. there's two like resort. Uh, they have it's like a small like boutique chain, and mm. we're doing just Kyoto and Hikado. Oh. But it's not like exploratory. It's really just for us to re- like mm. reset relax. and that's relax. Nice. And totally and spas nice. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. A great. But I made him this card. That just wrote like I, I just like wrote. <laughs> it's <so> stupid. <laughs> it's, I just basically drew stick figures in different sexual positions. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, because on I, theme, on theme. It was totally on theme. Yeah, it's totally on theme because it's it's also like you know I was like because we've both been so busy like yeah. his work is ramped up. He got a promotion and my Aww. book came out, so I've just been sort of nonstop. Yeah. And so like I think you know 
and we always try to find we find time for each other but i think it's it'll be nice to sort of just like yeah be fully yeah. present with each other that is really sweet oh, that's yeah. so sweet that oh that sounds so nice and you're going to japan i'm later going to japan too. in Everyone's october to japan. Oh, yeah. where are you going uh, I'm going to Kyoto and Tokyo, but we haven't like figured everything out okay. yet. Maybe I'll draw a card with different positions too. <laughs> <laughs> that's what do I want to do. do whatever you can. Yes. Make, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's why Balls I and drove. boobs everywhere. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Was dicks, and boobs. And, yeah. dicks and boobs Dude, or dicks and tits. You should, your next book should be just a book of how to make homemade cards. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, how sad would that be? Be like, here's 15 years worth of cards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't normally tell people. You guys are the first people I think I've told about. I got a lot. Wait, thumbnail. That'd be so cute. <laughs> Wait, tell me why when you're where I was asking about the one year anniversary dinner, I was like, oh, he's going to make like scrapbook dinner thing. Oh, I sorry. <laughs> I meant like as a gift, but like I, as far as like dinner goes, yeah, yeah. like something that like conjures up a memory, memory that you guys had or something that the person just really likes. Mm. Or if you guys want to try something new, like, oh, we're going to try. If you guys like to try new things mm. like, so, or an ingredient mm-hmm. that maybe oh, yeah, that's is cool. like yeah. unfamiliar to both of you, because oh. try- having new experiences together is is a great way to build a bond. But then also like... Um, Living, reliving mm. old experiences also to strengthen a bond as well. So I mm. think either one is a really good route to take, whether it's a first year or 20 year. That's true. Yeah. You know? oh, I love There's that. that therapy training coming up. I know. Oh my right? God. I have yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, it's more just like my personal <laughs> relationship experience, I think, that has helped. But it's it's different for everyone. But I do think yeah. those are sort of universal themes that yeah. do apply yeah. to relationships. I know you kind of shared with us, like, what's a good, like, first day, like, the steak? Mm-hmm. What is something, this is like sort of like close to that, but like what is something you'd make if you want to lock in like this person? You're like, I like this person. I want to cook this person this. A blow job. <laughs> like that is how I got my husband. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, no Take like a deep, blow deep throw. Yeah. Deep throw. Because yeah. then it's like, do you want that for the rest of your life? I can that's do more. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's, I, that's like, I'm actually serious. But you know, Yo, you shouldn't is, be a slut the first yeah, time if yeah. it's not you. Uh, Sorry. Like, you know that's not how you roll yeah. don't do it this is a side story but that's one it. time my friend like asked this girl like what do, what do you want to eat for dinner and she goes your your dick between two buns or something like that on a dating app <laughs> Damn. Like, who's buns wow. so I'm like just like, <laughs> like buns. she wants to eat it she wants her oh like like hot dog buns hot, hot dog, dog buns. buns okay i was gonna say and i was, I was like, like someone like, else's buns i was like that like, is a ford response oh, wow my God. did it work no <laughs> <laughs> but anyway so besides a bj <laughs> besides the bj yeah i mean i was uh, it, on that i feel like if you're too forward it's like they might assume that you're like that's okay. how you are with everyone yeah 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 so you gotta be like subtle. it's gotta be like subtle like undercover like what's that term a, a, a undercover freak on, a nun on the streets a freak in the <laughs> no. sheets that's like a good one <laughs> nun on the street. yeah, freak but on undercover the street. freak right I th- something like yeah. that yeah Wait, that's, so, how like to, that's how i like to play it got it but okay so anyway back to back <laughs> i was like i just want to make a blow job yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do i get this one make a, what are the ingredients it's, to a it's like it's like glutinous rice <laughs> 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 sorry oh my god that's hilarious <laughs> no because i think for me for myself like i do have like as someone that i do like being in the kitchen there's a dish i do make i'm like this is something i only cook for someone i really like which is what is it it's for me it's my minced pork over rice okay or noodles. do you self do you self mince yeah no oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you mean by self mince like, uh, like 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 with you like do it yourself no like, i get it like i get the gr- no i get the ground pork from 99 ranch okay, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. i just saute it yeah but that's like something very authentic not, yeah. and like i think for me i make it because i'm just like oh it gives you like wifey vibes like you totally. want to wife uh, me up after yeah. making Yes. That's yeah. like a comforting dish. Yeah. yeah. What is another dish? Like, because mine's very like specific to me. What's a general dish you think would be like? If I make spaghetti and meatballs, I'm gonna lock this person in. I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. sorry. I was like, sorry. Uh, that was the original <laughs> question. That's right. You reminded me. Yeah. Because, um, but I love your other answer. Yeah. I mean, I think it. I mean, it, it works. works. I think it to works. Some people. Yeah. You have to be good at it, though. You can't. Okay. Oh, sorry. That's I thought I was just diving into it again. <laughs> you can't give a bad one because then that's not gonna lock it in. It can't be any kind of BJ. Gotcha. Okay. So anyway. Back to the food part. Um, I think I, I that's I think like something that I like the fact that something gives wifey vibes yeah. or hubby vibes. Like I think that's like a really good one. Like and also like not trying too hard. Yeah, so I yeah, don't yeah. Feel like I I like your idea of the dish because like I in my book I have a, a dish called it's Mama Wu's mince beef and uh, beef and rice bowls and mm. it's similar to that mm. and it's it's so simple but it's like super comforting. Mm, you know, and got I think it. Something comforting and cozy is a really good one. Mm. But again, it's like kind of finding out what they like. That's true. That's how you like lock it in, I think, just to be like, 
Oh, I heard you like this. I'm going to make my, yeah. Yeah, you know, okay. and make sure okay. it's good, though. Like, don't fuck it up. Got it. Because then you're going to lose them. <laughs> that's true, that's true, that's true. Okay, thanks right. for that. Right. Dish. <laughs> yes. I keep thinking now with a side of BJ, though. <laughs> with a side of BJ. No, yeah. the, the main course is a BJ. And uh, then be like. The other, well, yeah. you focus on the side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Noted. Yeah, it's, it's true, though. I mean, like, a good BJ gets you far. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> it Quote, does. You can do it anywhere. It's episode. clean. Yeah. Good BJ, good gets BJ you can get you far. anywhere. Okay. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> but, you know, with your spouse or partner. Not, I don't mean like in, 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 not, in not a professional sense. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that's wrong. Yeah. Well, if you were to think about. So, <laughs> okay. You say if you didn't have your husband and then you were just going on a date, yeah. right? And you have obviously Asian cuisine is something very special to you. Mm-hmm. And you were dating someone who's not Asian. Yeah. How do you slowly introduce mm. Asian cuisine to this or a different type of cuisine something totally. they're not familiar with well today. honestly I'd be like I'd first of all be a little bit concerned if they've never had Asian cuisine mm. I'd be like what the fuck is wrong with you like <laughs> Like, were you born, I don't know, in the 1900s? Like, in the 1800s, like, literally, how can you not run into Asian cuisine? Because I, and I think, like, that also begs the question, like, do you like it? Like, because I wouldn't mm. be able to be with someone who mm. didn't. Mm-hmm. But to answer your actual question, which is how do you introduce them, for me, it would be like, I take them to a certain restaurant mm. and see how they respond to it. Yeah, yeah. But that would kind of tell me whether or not I'd want to take them. Yeah. You know what I mean, if they yeah, didn't yeah. like it, they weren't like, this is so good, mm. then I'd kind of be like, ooh, like, I don't know if I. Like, yeah. like that idea. Yeah. But I also like, I like, I like someone being able to, who's open to trying new things. That's right. true. I think that's really fun. Yeah. So you say know? like, I think you're like Cantonese speaking, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So I say you go to dim sum mm-hmm. and then have you introduced people to like feng jiao? Oh, wait, what's feng Chicken jiao? feet? Oh, is that what it's called? Feng jiao. What do you Ours call it? Ours is called geiger. Oh, geiger. Okay, yeah. 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 Feng, I think feng jiao is like the more proper the way more, to say like, it. the more classy way? <laughs> yeah. Because there's literally geiger like. Geiger is kind of derogatory. Chicken feet. Chicken feet. feet. It is literally, Versus, literally I think, chicken feet. I think Feng Jiao is like Phoenix something. Oh, right? oh wow. That sounds like, so different. It sounds Jiao. a little bit more like Feng mythical like, and like kind of like has Phoenix like, like talent or something yeah, like that. Yeah, okay. I didn't, wow. I've never heard the Feng Jiao part. Yeah. Mm. Okay. But how do I, I mean like, I just feel like this is chicken feet and it's good. You know, like, <laughs> uh, stick it in your mouth. Like, yeah, put it in your mouth, bitch. Like, <laughs> if you don't like it, we're not going to work. No, actually, my husband doesn't like chicken feet. He finds it gross. <laughs> Um, and it's because like I like chicken feet, but I'm not. That's not the first thing I order. Yeah. You know, like I have nothing against like eating it. It's just not like actually, quite frankly, like it's not like my favorite, favorite? thing to eat. But I don't hate it. Like I, yeah. I would like yeah. it if it's done well. Would your tactic be? This is really random. Let's say someone who hasn't had Asian food. Like I'm gonna take you to the most authentic Asian place, or I'm gonna take you, let's say, to like more like a chain like Panda. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Not like, do you do a slow introduction? Yeah, because honestly, I don't know Panda's like an introduction to anything. It's just like I know. sugar and breading. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but Panda's very good. But... I, mean, I like Panda. Yeah. No, I'm not dissing it. I, yeah. I like it when it's good. Sometimes you can get a bad batch. Oh, when it's yeah. like too much breading. Yeah. You know. But would you like kind of just make it as authentic, like a mom and pop, like Asian restaurant, or more like kind of like a chain? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The gritty version or the clean version? Um. Probably the gritty version, mm. just because I mean, like, I would. It, it's not about easing them into anything. It's not like I'm. That's, like, true, that's true. Showing them like something really dark. That's and, true. Yeah. Like disgusting. That's it's true. Like it's a delicious cuisine. Like I'm just gonna like dive right head in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I mean, like, if they have to be eased in, then I'd also be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" That's true. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. So because I mean, like, so much of our relationship, at least mine and my husband's, revolves around eating. We eat three times a day. Mm-hmm. You know, if we're on vacation, so much of our vacation is spent, I don't know about you guys, but spent looking for restaurants and like yeah. street food, like mm-hmm. just throughout the day, like finding cute little snacks and like mm. places to sit down and have like a, a drink or some, you know, boba or something like that. And it's like, if they don't like that kind of stuff, yeah. it's like you're doing it by yourself and that's kind of boring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want someone who t- had to have, sh- like I always say, you want someone who's like the opposite of you pers- personality wise, mm-hmm. but like has similar interests. Mm-hmm. Cause I think that's important cause you do things together, but you also want to have things to talk about. So if you have different perspectives on things, True. It's like, it makes your life interesting. You always have things to talk about. Like me and my husband never run out of things to talk about. But that's mm. also because I just talk a lot. <laughs> uh, I talk a lot of the same thing and I complain a lot. And so I'm just like, and he's just like listening to me. But <laughs> but I think, you know, it, but it, I do believe that a, a different personality mm. is really important. A similar uh, interest. Mm. I feel what, like that was like longevity a, a therapist tip right there. I know, yeah. I feel like I'm just like dropping all of yeah, them. Yeah, dropping yeah, bombs over here. Tits everywhere. <laughs> Those go well together too. <laughs> Oh my, oh god. my I'm, god, I'm so bad. No, I don't I know love where it. that came from. <laughs> Our next question is going to make you choose between two things that okay. you love very much. Okay. You could only have one. Okay. 
Dicks or tits? Just kidding. <laughs> well, no, just I think kidding. we know the answer to that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I, had, I, didn't, I didn't start that I think that we in. know the answer to that, yeah. though. <laughs> Sorry, I had, to, I had to say that. We all have the same <laughs> answer, but yeah. yeah. I think all of our answers are the same, you know, and if it's not, no biggie, but I think we are. For you, it is food or sex. Oh, oh. that is a good question. Oh, that's hard. Oh, that's a really good question. Hmm. I mean, like realistically i eat more than i have sex mm-hmm. Ooh, which one yeah so this it's, is I guess a it's like, really good what if question. you were gonna like die in a week okay or like in a couple days oh <laughs> what'd you gosh, say this is if very you're dark die in a couple days so it takes off the like oh man like, food you feel like you need to can like, i you really yeah, can't yeah. survive or is it more survive. like which one are you do you enjoy more that's hard that's hard right? i guess we can make it less fatal like less that. Morbid. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah like you're literally gonna die in a week what can you you only do one that's what you enjoy that is a really good question because like no one's ever asked me that question, and um, I feel stumped because I honestly don't know. No. <gasps> Shout oh. out to our outliner, our, our editor. Yeah. Really good question because honestly, like you have to pick, but I have to pick. You have yeah. to pick. This actually was a question on Friends too. The show. Oh, oh I think I. Remember oh, I don't remember that. that episode. Okay, I guess I guess food mm. because I guess food. Because... <laughs> no, no reason. <laughs> I mean, I'm like. I, because I, I, I honestly think they're both really important to yeah, like yeah. a happy life. Yeah. So it's like fifty one percent food. Fifty one percent food. Okay. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. But that's only it's because awesome. I'm being forced to choose because I'm gonna that's die me. in a week. So <laughs> like, uh, but I and I think if you're about to die in a week, sex might be the last thing on your mind. Because you're like so tired. <laughs> yeah, right? you're tired. Tell you like, what you're dying die. of. Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah. You're I'm like die anyway. Why do I need to feed myself? I should just live. Like just be a big whore, yeah. Yeah. Just like big big open hole. <laughs> All right, we know just Janet. In me. We know Janet's, Janet's answer. answer. Yeah. Like Jay, you would choose sex over food. No, I never said that. <laughs> but you kind of insinuated. You're I like, think it's a possibility. Her. Okay, well, give she's us like, your answer. Okay, come dump, just like. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what would you, what would you choose? I am also, I or not also. I just, I'm a practical person, so I probably would choose food because I feel like it's higher up on the like, what do you call that? The, to the live? pyramid of yeah, of survival, needs. survival. Yeah. yeah, and you do it more often, obviously. Yeah, like, no Where's, one really has sorry. sex three times a day. <laughs> and they're just like, I'm lost. I need to have sex. <laughs> like, like she said, the survival thing. <laughs> I'm lo- yeah, like <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that that's really. Funny what would you pick? Yeah, what would you pick? It's really tough, but I actually, I would choose food. Okay. I think the reason why is like when I'm craving something, you have something so incredibly good. It's a different type of feeling that you get when you're then getting an orgasm or having sex. You're like, holy shit, this is so like, it's a different feeling. It's a different (laughs) feeling. They're both great, but it's a different sensation. Mm, That is true. Like when I eat something so amazing. Obviously, are you eating with your like... (laughs) Bottom holes. <laughs> it's a totally it's different. Food totally food into. Different That's true. I just, I also really love food. Like yeah. when I eat something that's just like hits all my like taste buds, it just hits. Totally. I, 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 I understand what you're saying though. Yeah. But, but again, they're both very, they're very different. different things that are, I think, like. Because yeah. when you're craving the other one, it also hits very well, it too. It totally <laughs> hits differently, too. But it's, it's really good. It's yeah. It's like, yeah, like that's better than stuff. Yeah, other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hard, that's a really yeah. good question. Yeah. Wait. But good thing about... I'm not, to, hopefully I don't die in a week, but that's a good, that's a good <laughs> question. That's literally like the only question that's ever stumped me, I think. Oh. Mm. Well, now you know an answer to it. Yeah. Well, I don't know the answer to it. <laughs> well, you well, said food. Well, I guess 51, 51% food. food. That's true. That's yeah. right. But I'm kind of like taking it back because then I'm like, oh. Mm. You guys, so, you should ask your husband and see what he says. I, yeah. Oh, I know. I'm sure he'd say food because, like, I'm the more sexual one than he oh, is. Oh, I see. Yeah. And you make amazing food for him, I'm sure. So. Yeah, he's like, yeah. Well, well, I think I make amazing sex for him, too. I do a pretty, <laughs> I do a pretty good recipe for a blowjob, <laughs> too. So, <laughs> so I, I'm not, I'd be offended by both answers. I'd be like, hey! he'd be like, food. I'd be like, what? And he'd be like, sex? I'm like, what? So I'd just no be right like, answer, so yeah. angry he can't win. <laughs> Helen hasn't answered this question. A sex oh, for sure. Oh, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Food. I was gonna say finally a very clear answer. Wait, I would not <laughs> food. I thought you choose sex. I mean, they're close. They are. They're, they're right. Fifty-one percent, yeah. forty-nine. Oh, 51, I see, 49. See. You know what? You have Maybe sex. Fifty-two, forty-eight. But you, you know. know what? I mean, you just have sex while eating. You yeah, do but both. That's not, yeah, but you can't do both. But yes, that's that's. You can't like do. A is fun... it like? Can't you do both? Physically not possible. Yeah, you I can. Mean, you, you can. can. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Have, done that. have you ever done that? I'm trying to think. Oh my god, that's your next. Maybe book. like a maybe there's like a layover, <laughs> but not like at the same time on deliberately. A layover. But maybe like <laughs> yeah. at the end of a me break? eating something, like okay. me at the end of me eating something, 
we start the other oh, I see, I see. Oh, okay, but not yeah. like a deliberate like I'm gonna eat this <laughs> like burger while you <laughs> throw it in me you know what I mean yeah, like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just, so or, I like, think or like sometimes you can incorporate food into sex Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 I think it's more like a like foreplay or like kind of like aphrodisiacy thing. Yeah, uh, totally. Mm. Although I'm such a neat freak that I like that oh, freaks yeah. me out. Barring that it's like in the shower where I can just be washed off. I'm like, <laughs> I don't want like food in our bed. I don't yeah, want food yeah, yeah. on the floor. I don't want like our dogs licking us while we're doing this. Like it's weird. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like, but yeah, you could tell. Remember when Jessica Simpson had that um that edible line of. Um, products. Panties. Do you remember that? Edible, edible panties. panties so. Not edible panties. She'd like. It was like a. It was like a foam or a mousse or something. Anyway, you'll oh. look it up and you'll be like, oh, it was so weird. I remember seeing her on a show and she like squirt in her hand. She'd eat it and it looked like she was eating like uh, like mousse, like hair mousse. Oh. I, I'm surprised you guys don't remember that. We'll look it up. She, for yeah, sure. look it up. It's it's very. I weird. think Cardi B has a line of whipped cream. Does she? Yeah. Huh. That makes, that makes sense. sense. Brand, that makes yeah. sense. That's yeah. very on brand for her. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about your book. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> your debut cookbook. Yes. Did You Eat Yet? Love the title, by the Thank way. Thank you. It's such a good, like, mm. inherently, there's so much love in that title. Yes. Totally. That's that I what think, I yeah, from, like, an Asian perspective, it's like, oh, yeah, we get it. Yeah. You know, that's a great, great title. Tell us a little bit about the book. Yeah, the book is, I'm super excited about it. I'm like, it's like, it's one of my, it's like probably the pro- project that I'm most proud of because mm. um, I think it embodies like everything that I wanted the, my first cookbook to be. I, I got the best editor. She's actually Asian too and she just like got it, mm, you great. know, and I feel like she just understood my story. She understood my vibe and she she even said, she's like, this was the easiest cookbook that I've ever made because you just had this very clear vision mm. and I was like, yeah, I had a very clear vision and I really wanted those stories to really convey like a happy tone but also like like have some substance to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the recipes, I really wanted them to be like simple enough, but not like so simple where you're like, this is insulting simple. You know, some mm-hmm. recipes are like, just add like, you know, roll peanut butter in a, like if you make ants on a log, you know, like oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. that's so stupid. Like I don't need to be told how to make something. So not that stupid, but things that were like things you could integrate into your weekly arsenal of recipes. Mm-hmm. That was sort of what I really wanted. Um, and I wanted a wide, wide array, uh, a wide array of, chapters so we did like breakfast all the way to dessert and everything in between Mm. so it was exactly the book that i wanted to make and it's just been a lot of fun to sort of promote it and talk about it and um have it out in the world yeah what are some inspirations behind some of your recipes i really wanted things that like that combined my asian heritage but also kind of like updated with my american upbringing Mm -hmm. and then also travels around the world Mm. so it was really much just kind of like i think the biggest inspiration was really like what do I like to eat because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of my friends and people that I'm around also eat similarly. Yeah. So it's kind of like what is sort of this updated palette that we're all sort of um, that we all have because mm-hmm. I think th- the more that you know I think our generation it's like th- our palettes are just a lot more updated mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. I think we just are open to more things and open to different combinations mm-hmm. and that was sort of the inspiration behind it and um, the stories I talk about like my husband a lot I talk about my family members I just talk about you know, my likes and kind of joke around as well. So yeah. what's like an, an interesting backstory behind one of the recipes that you can share with us? I think one of the backstories, one of the recipes is like, I have this chocolate cake that I make for mm. my, my private company, my private chef company, the delicious cook. And it's like, I've never like revealed it, but then I finally like actually share it in my book. Mm. Um, but I think every recipe has kind of like a backstory or like a, I'm trying to think like a like a significance, like a significance behind yeah. it in a way like whether it's an ingredient or something like that so yeah i feel like viewers should get the book and <laughs> find, find out, out. <laughs> like, you turn and reveal everything <laughs> i really want to see this chocolate cake now <laughs> i know now i'm curious it's like a flower chocolate what. cake but it has like a, a secret ingredient which again you'll have to get the book get the book to, to, to figure out. it out well yeah. you ladies will have it but yeah. i mean yes. anyone who's listening <laughs> yeah well you call yourself an all-american asian chef right that's part of the title too of the yeah book, right? yeah the subtitle what does that mean to you totally well i think i really wanted to de- redefine the definition of all-american because mm. i think you know like i think like maybe 20 10 even 10 years ago it was like all american you know you'd think of like a ralph Lauren ad or something mm-hmm. like just all white but i think like an all-american person now is very different you know, I think it it, it it doesn't mean one type of person or one race. Like, I think so many different types of races can be all American. And we're kind of all becoming a melting pot, too. I mean, mm-hmm. everyone's a little bit of everything, at least starting to be. Instead of saying an Asian American chef, because I think that's kind of obvious, I wanted to be like, I'm Asian, but I'm also all American. Mm-hmm. And that was sort of where that subtitle came from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. A, it has a, had a little, I'm not super political, but it had a little bit of a political 
sort of bent to it. Mm. Yeah. 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 But not in like an in your face type of way. Yeah. It's more in like a little like sort of tongue in cheek type of yeah, way. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I feel like it gives that edge to the title. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Me too. Thanks. Defines who you are. Too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think growing up too is always like, uh, you know, you're kind of being fed like all American is like white. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, well, no, mm-hmm. I'm very American. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and it's not saying you have to be born in America, but if you if you feel if you are American and you you know you feel like you really um, relate to being American and like you, then you're all American. Yeah. I don't know, like it's your own definition of what you want to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, all American is a very general term now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of you know the blend of your cultural upbringing. Um, focusing specifically on the Asian side and interacting with others who maybe are not as familiar with that type of like culinary background. Right. What is like one type of Asian food that you think everyone should try if they haven't, if they are more kind of a Panda Express is like the <laughs> they I eat other Asian food. <laughs> so you only eat Panda Express? Yeah. Beijing beef all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Crispy shrimp. Um, <laughs> I haven't tried it yet. And I'll get all the scared. ads, right? Uh, yeah, I get all the ads. <laughs> the billboards. I'm like, <laughs> but I'm very skeptical. I'm like, it's going to be one of those tiny little, like, bay shrimps that are, yeah. like, oh, yeah. covered in, like, breading. breading. All breading. It's, like, sweet sugar sauce. Watch should be amazing. I know. It's going to be like, mmm. I'm going to, like, follow up with you guys. Like, it's so good. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. I mean, there's so many, like, great dishes, mm. I mean, in every single type of Asian cuisine. But I, I guess if you had to choose... Probably like Vietnamese, maybe. Mm. Um, but again, that's like splitting hairs because I, I know, feel like so every single like you know type of Asian cuisine has their own dishes. But I, Vietnamese tends to be like one that's like universally mm. like mm. it's the flavors are subtle. It's it's a lot of there's a lot of sweetness in it. Um, so maybe like um, obviously everyone knows pho, mm-hmm. but like you know like a vermicelli bowl or something like that. So ah. that's mm. that I think. Yeah, again, that's a tough question. You asked yeah. ask the hard hitting question: <laughs> sex or food, or yeah. what? What's the you know? So I think that would be my if I had to answer that question. Yeah, that yeah. Would be my that's answer. a great one. That's a great one. Well, what about a dish that everyone should know how to make? Even for someone mm. like me who doesn't like the microwave is like the most the thing that I use the most in my the microwave. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're talking to someone so, with his own. Oh, I love it. I love the microwave too. It's great for reheating foods so, <laughs> and melting butter when needed. Um, what is a dish that everyone should make? I mean, again, that's a hard question mm. because, like, I love so many different things. But are we talking about dinner, breakfast, dessert? Like, Ooh, you can choose whichever like meal is your favorite. What do you think is lunch like a and dinner? I actually don't eat. I don't actually eat like a full on lunch lots of times just because I'm like it's either it's like breakfast and then yeah. I kind of like glide through the day and mm. eat snacks and like I eat little piecemeal stuff and then dinner. So I think for dinner, like, like I think if I had to stick with the basic, like, know how to roast a chicken. Is that Damn. That dual that's all? Oh, I was like, what are you saying? A whore. I know, that's like I thought so it would be like vanilla. fried that, rice. Fried rice. Means- I mean, like, if something that's like universal, though, yeah, 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 it's yeah, like, because fried rice is delicious but it, i don't I, I don't think it's as useful as knowing mm. how to roast a delicious chicken right you know i'm thinking more in utility and like what can really be sort of like you know whether you meal prep or not like you know mm. a roast chicken can kind of you can spread it out or you mm. can have it all in one night i don't and it can go with everything it yeah, goes with yeah. fried rice it goes with noodles That's true. um you can put different sauces on it to make it have different flavor profiles yeah. so i think roasting a chicken is is a uh, is really important like a lot because a lot of the recipes actually the base a lot of, not a lot of them but i have a whole chicken chapter and there is like a lot of the the um, recipes involve cooking a chicken as the base mm. um so there's one recipe is like spatchcocking a chicken which is basically like butterflying it and then roasting it and then putting like an orange sauce on it like mm. kind of like pan express <laughs> but like healthy <laughs> you know like not the all the sugar yeah, but yeah. you know it's like a healthier version yeah, yeah. of the sauce uh, made with like real orange juice and like honey and like gotcha. you know th- as a sweetener you know so things like that so you'll like that one okay. I know. you'll love that one time to upgrade <laughs> upgrade yeah yes. time to upgrade um and so i think like roasting chicken how did you learn how to cook you said you just like were kind of like for just six months yeah and... just in a room just like lock myself <laughs> in, in my kitchen. bathroom and yeah. just like i'm gonna learn uh, yeah i locked myself in the kitchen when i say lock myself there's no door to it but like pr- <laughs> like pr- like pretty much like spent my time in the kitchen um and just kind of learned mm. like, what like are you, YouTube myself. or so there was this so I did follow this like sort of like outlined program this wasn't when YouTube was huge this mm. was like when YouTube was sort of like still just coming YouTube, up yeah. you yeah, know yeah. and so because this was like 15 years I would say like yeah how long I was like 
12, 13, mm. 14, 15 years ago. And so there was this like sort of online program that kind of laid mm. things out. It wasn't super extensive, but it had like sort of the different bullet points of what to cover. So I kind of like followed that. And then I sort of just like also taught myself at the same time. Mm. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. It sounds really... I feel Sounds like one of the ideas. barriers with cooking, though, is that sometimes you have to buy all the ingredients just to, like to with the potential to just fuck it up. Totally. Mm. Which totally. Is, it's like that. I think that's my barrier sometimes. Mm. Because you don't to, want to fuck up the expensive ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Like you're paying so much for shrimp or steak mm-hmm. and then you're just going to try it out. Totally. <laughs> but I mean, it's like a one time deal, that's you know, true. like if you fuck it up, then you won't you won't fuck it up again. You yeah, know? that's true. Like, yeah, that's how I feel. But again, like, yeah, there's restrictive barriers as well to maybe someone who might not be able to, you know, like afford certain ingredients mm-hmm. and stuff. And you definitely don't want to fuck it if you're really like splurging on certain things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you have a shit ton of money, then just like buy go to Erewhon. And try. Yeah. But, yeah, go to Erewhon. Oh, my God, Erewhon. Don't even get me started. I hate that place. I, I said it. Include that. <laughs> Include that in here. It's a d- ridiculous store. And every time I check out, it's like, Wait, I so have... So you mean every time you check out? So you've been there more than <laughs> you just Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so I've been there, like, three times, no joke, in my entire life. It's literally right It's literally right next to my gym. Yeah. So it's like, like, Studio City has Equinox, and then Erewhon is literally, like, next door. Yeah. So, like, I'll deliberately go to a different, like, drive to go to a different mm. store on my way out just because I don't like it. Because I tried it. I was like, oh... It's like so expensive, and then I always find my. Re- I always check my receipts, and that's like a habit I picked up from my mom. Yeah. But I always find random stuff I didn't buy on there. And oh, I'm just really? like, why the fuck do Ooh. I have this? And what is this? And it's like I think they just assume everyone's like super, super duper, like don't care about their money, like they're that kind of rich. Yeah. And I'm just like, they throw like, in random things in your. Yeah, sometimes I literally scan things that I did not buy, and I'll go back and be like, can I get this refunded? And they'll be, like, I was like, I didn't buy this, and they'll be like, looking at me like I'm like poor. <laughs> And I'm like, well, even if I was rich, you still shouldn't be doing this. Whether, you know, it's principle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's how I am. No, like, I feel it's like. It's a principle that counts. <laughs> I'm talking to myself all the time because I'm definitely that person that's like, um, you overcharged me. So can I have my 50 cents back? Like, <laughs> I, I don't care. I'm like, money oh, yeah, is for money. Sure. For it sure. adds up. I agree. <laughs> No, because it's funny because with Erwan, Ear, is it Erwan? Erwan. Who cares? Erwan. Erwan. It matter. <laughs> I hate that place. I know. But anyways, I'm on the same boat. I, I walk into Erwan, Erwan, just to compare prices. To be like, isn't this crazy? Yeah. This beef is $12. I know. It's at. so expensive. It's gougy. It's gougy. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like price gougy. I like, hate it. I've never heard the word gougy. Uh, I know. Me neither. But I use it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I literally use it all the time. Well, Ronnie, besides a disliking for Erewhon, <laughs> um, <laughs> what is the message that you hope to leave with your audience or people who either read your book or watch you on your shows? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, what is your, I guess, the message that you want to leave? I ultimately would like to take away, like, the sense that, like, I don't know. There's there's so many. That's You are literally hitting the hard <laughs> questions because I was like, I could go on about all the things I want to leave. But I I, I, I think ultimately, like, I, I'm not super, like, preachy or, like, I'm not always the most positive person, but mm-hmm. I think I would like to leave a positive impact, whatever that mm-hmm. way is. So, like, mm-hmm. I think, you know, even having a bad day, I try not to, like, pass that on to somebody. And, like, I never leave, like, nasty comments online. Like, mm-hmm. any person I encounter, I either want to leave them with, like, a positive vibe or nothing at all like mm, i never want to leave them with a, a good, negative yeah, moment yeah. you know not to say i don't get into fights with people i mean I really don't but i mean not to say i won't get into disagreements but that's my goal and so i think when if people like see my story i think ultimately i would like for people to either get the sense of like i can do anything that i want to do mm. um or i want to live like sort of a life where like i don't have regrets i think ultimately mm. that's that's and again, I don't really like go into something with the intention of leaving a message because I right, think that right. gets kind of preachy and stuff. But if I had to, it'd be more so like just someone feeling like empowered that they can yeah, do yeah. whatever they want to do. Because I mean, we have one life to live. Yeah. And ultimately, if you, you don't live it to the fullest, I, I always say as long as you're not hurting anyone mm-hmm. and you're not hurting yourself and it makes you happy, you should do it. Mm. You know, regardless of what everyone thinks. I mean, I've had to sort of go against the grain of what my parents have said. And I still do, you know, and I still have to, like, battle my mom out for what, like, she thinks, like, her definition of success is. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know, she'll always be like, well, why aren't you a doctor? And I'm like, mom, like, do you not see what I'm actually doing? Like, it's Mm -hmm. pretty cool. (laughs) And she's like, but you could be a doctor, like your sisters. And I'm like, but they they don't love it all the time Mm -hmm. either. You know what I mean? Like, it's, and I'm like, so that's how I always say it's like, don't be afraid to 
pursue what you want to do yeah. and start immediately. Yeah. There's yeah. no reason there's nothing that should hold you back. I mean, barring like obvious things like money or like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know if you have kids and you need to sort of like work them into sort of your plan you've shared a lot of exciting things with us ronnie and you know your book just came out but what is next what is coming up in the future what are projects that are happening what are you excited about uh so i just signed with um a new manager a new talent oh, manager congratulations uh, Jason Weinberg and alex kovacs of entitled management so and then i have we have a couple meetings with like the larger agencies to try to sort of pan out sort of our next steps Ooh. so that's i think what i'm most excited about i mean probably when this podcast comes out i'll we'll probably have like there'll be like other updates but i think um that was like a huge a huge thing for me because they're like really big yeah. managers so um so I'm really excited about that. You know, we're always working on different shows. I actually had a show right before COVID that got canceled. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a bummer because um, it, it was like sitting on the shelf for like, it was actually about to shoot one week prior to lockdown. Aww. And so we almost had it in the bag, but that got canceled. And so, you know, we're always pitching new shows and I'd love to have a second cookbook, yeah. you know? So it's, it's right now it's about focusing on getting the word out for this first cookbook mm -hmm. and then hopefully working on a second cookbook and more television. I mean... Sometimes I, I'm always like, what do I, I think I look back at sort of my career and I go, I've been able to like do all these really fun things that I never thought I'd be able to do. Yeah. So like trying to appreciate that, but then also being like, actually like now moving forward, like I just want to keep doing what I'm doing, you know? Mm. So I think trying to realize that my life is kind of where I want it to be. I just yeah. want it to continue yeah. being this way. That's really nice. Um, That's a great. And trying to, that it's a hard thing to do, right? Because mm -hmm. we're always trying to looking forward to the next thing. Mm -hmm. We're always like, mm -hmm. you know, trying to think like, what's our next thing after this? And yeah. it's very stressful. So just trying to like be present with what actually has been done yeah. and what's been accomplished and also what's happening right now. But to answer your question, <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally, again, I'm a bumbling fool. But to yes. answer your question, I signed with great new amazing management that I've yeah. actually been wanting to work with for my whole career because they're like the top of the top. So mm -hmm. I'm super excited for that um, and sort of try trying to just like allow myself to be excited about the unknown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no, those yeah. are great. I mean, That's congratulations. <laughs> yeah. I know Thanks. we are going to be watching your journey. Thank uh, you. For yeah. sure. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Thank you. And then uh, for your first cookbook, we're excited to share to listeners. Where can they purchase the book? Anywhere, anywhere books are sold. Yeah. Okay, but Amazon's probably the easiest. Got I mean, it. I always tell, I always, whenever people ask me or need a link, I just say, just go to Amazon because that's everyone uses Amazon. That's true. But Barnes and Noble, Walmart, like a lot of the indies. Awesome. Yeah. And if they want to follow on your journey, where can they connect with you? Uh, Instagram is Ronnie C Wu. My Facebook is, I think. Uh, Facebook.com at the uh, backslash the delicious cook. Twitter is Ronnie Siwu. But who's using Twitter nowadays anyway? I mean, <laughs> like, come on, let's be honest. But you got the the delicious cook handle. Yeah, I, I wow. Yeah, yeah, I got the delicious cook handle when I when I started. Like it wasn't there weren't that many sort oh, of like right, yeah. things. I mean, I've had it for a long time. I even have the RonnieWu.com wow. website. Wow. Yeah, but I did not. I could not get the Ronnie Wu. Uh, Instagram. It was the one handle I could get, so I had to include my middle initial. Aww. Mm -hmm. That's fine too. W O O, by the way. W O O. Yep. Woo. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're both woos. I'm a woo. W U. You're a W U, though. Yeah. yeah you're got, a it, w -U. got it. Well, thank you so much, Ronnie, for joining us on this episode. I had so much fun and I had so many laughs. Yeah. Oh, uh, my God. Thank you for having me. Um, I had so much fun. I you guess. ladies are so much fun. Aw. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're excited. I feel like this could be like a five hour. I know. I feel like this could going. <laughs> I think talk about a little bit. I need to ask you more things after this podcast, but. It was so great learning about your journey, your fun tips, and your little uh, sayings you said throughout the episode. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't wait to replay this episode for myself. Um, but with that, you can catch us all on the podcasting platforms at Asian Boss Girl. You can find Ronnie. Ronnie. <laughs> you can find Ronnie on his Instagram page. And um, if you enjoyed this episode, um, check us out on our Discord community and buy Ronnie's book. And let's share the recipes in our cooking channel. We have a channel yeah. dedicated to food. So I'm excited to see if anyone picks up your book and like tries a new dish. I'll try your orange chicken dish. That's not <laughs> orange chicken for panda. I think I, I, I reference um, fast food Asian joints. Okay. So just know what I'm thinking gotcha. about when I do it in the head note. Okay. Noted. Yeah. And with that, we'll catch you on the next episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs>